Let me just make sure you know this. If you're on a statin, your doctor probably put you on that statin because you had high cholesterol, because that's the standard of medicine. Uh, you also ought to know this. Um, half the people that have heart attacks and strokes have a normal cholesterol level. So if your doctor didn't put you on statin and he said, you don't need a statin because your cholesterol level is normal, you need to be afraid. Be very afraid and listen to the rest of this video. So <clears throat> uh, John, Matt Kelly, Edward Kwong, uh, a lot of folks on this channel, a lot of viewers are very smart. They understand that it's not the cholesterol value that's usually killing you. It's a thing we call cardiovascular inflammation. They also understand that, look, you can test for that. We've got a free digital course, or at least it's still free at this point. Uh, you can take the information, go to your lab, get tested, take it to your doc, and um, then start hashing it out regarding what you need to do next. It also is a heck of a motivator, too, if you need to lose a few pounds. It also is a heck of a motivator if you need to watch that glucose, because insulin resistance and glucose is by far the number one cause of cardiovascular inflammation. And if your doctor has told you you don't have that, again, be very afraid. So, <clears throat> uh, John, in his discussions and his responses, uh, talked about the Jupiter study. And it, it made me realize I've never done a video on the Jupiter study. Why am I doing that? Because, and if you're reading me, uh, yes, here I have a heart attack and stroke uh, cardiovascular inflammation channel, and I haven't done a video on the Jupiter study. Well, <clears throat> what's the big deal here? Jupiter was the study. It was set up by Paul Ridker. He was the smart guy at Harvard that began to see this back with Wascops, or well, West of Scotland uh, trial. What they did was they took people who have normal cholesterol levels, but a high C-reactive protein, and they gave them resuvastatin. They blinded it to see some got it, some didn't, and they had to stop the study in less than two years, way early. Now, why did they have to stop it? Because it cut the risk of heart attack and stroke by more than half. So this works. It's a very effective uh, focus, a very effective treatment, and unfortunately, way too few people are aware of it. Unfortunately, way too many people uh, depend on their doctors to be aware of it. So let's go over the study. It's New England Journal, 2008. Again, it's been here for 10 years, and we're still not getting that message out. The title is Resuvastatin, or Crestor, to prevent cardiovascular events or vascular events in men and women with elevated C-reactive protein. Now, <clears throat> increased levels of the uh, inflammatory biomarker C-reactive protein predict cardiovascular events. Statins lower CRP as well as cholesterol. So we hypothesize that people with elevated CRP but low, uh, but not high uh, cholesterol without hyperlipidemia Hyper means too high. Lipid means fats, and in the blood, emia means in the blood. Without high cholesterol, might benefit from the statin treatment. So how did they do it? Seven, this is a big study, multi centers, uh, 17,802 apparently healthy men and women with LDLs less than 130. The average was about 100. Now we'd love to get that below 70 these days, but at that point in time, we thought 100 was okay. Uh, C-reactive protein levels were uh, two or higher. So again, they had what, what was considered a normal cholesterol and a high C-reactive protein. They gave them uh, one group, 20 milligrams of Crestor, and another group, um, nothing, a, a placebo. The trial was stopped after a follow-up of 1.9 years. Resuvastatin reduced LDL by 50%, which is no big surprise. It decreased high-sensitive CRP by 37%, also no surprise. The rates of primary endpoint, heart attack and stroke, 
dropped uh, dramatically. In the treatment group, 0.77%, uh, and in the other group, the placebo group, 1.36. Now, there's a fellow named Diamond that gets a lot of play on YouTube because he says, you know, when you're talking about less than 1% versus 1.5%, I'll take my chances without the statin. That's fine. But let me ask you something. If you're one of these people that has high C-reactive protein, you're suddenly in a very, very different category. You're not somebody that doesn't have any risk at all. So, <clears throat> uh, corresponding rates of um, myocardial infarction or heart attack were 0.18 versus 0.34. So again, major drop in heart attack and stroke risk. Consistent effects were observed in all subgroups evaluated. Uh, and we'll talk about that a little bit because I'm going to go into the detail on this study. It's a critical study to know if you don't know it. Um, Resuvastatin group did not have significant increase in myopathy. You know, the, what about the side effects? Um, they didn't have that. They did have a higher incidence of physician-reported diabetes, but really not so much, even with the 20 milligrams of Crestor. And as we've seen more recently, uh, you can go much lower and probably should. Um, I usually will start patients that are really hot on about five milligrams per day. And as we get patients calmed down, we get them to like 2.5 milligrams twice a week. And that is not a, that's not going to move you down the diabetes highway. And we'll see just how fast the 20 milligrams per day did. Now, <clears throat> I have uh, underlined a lot of this, probably won't read all of it. But some of this does help this set the stage. Current treatment algorithms for prevention of MI, stroke, and death. My MI is myocardial infarction. Death from cardiovascular causes recommends statins for people with already established disease, diabetes, and hyperlipidemia. Number one, very few people that have prediabetes know that they have it. Over half of us have it once we're age 30 or above. Half of all... Uh, but here's the problem. Half of all heart attacks and strokes occur among apparently healthy women, with men and women, with low levels of LDL, cholesterol, that are currently under the level re recommended for treatment. So that's where you get into trouble. If you're waiting for your doc, who's also waiting on your cholesterol value, you may be in a heap of trouble. Measurement of HSCRP, an inflammatory biomarker, predicts future vac vascular events. Uh, we've previously shown that thatin, uh, statin therapy decreases CRP among healthy persons. So this is the first prospective study where they actually said, okay, we're going to get otherwise healthy people with low LDLs but have inflammation. And we're going to give them a statin and see if that impacts their heart attack and stroke. Sure enough, it did. Now this, uh, let's jump on down to some tables. This table is baseline characteristics of the trial per participants. The study group versus the placebo group. Their age, median age, 80, uh, 66. So this was a middle-aged group. I'm not going to go through the details. Uh, blood pressure, gender, race, ethnic group, all of these things, BMI, all of these were similar. So they did good. Um, randomization is what we mean. The randomization process was effective. Now, I want to mention LDL. So their LDL average was 108. Their HDL average was 49 for both groups. Triglycerides were, pretty, were fairly high, 118. And glucose was 94 fasting. So that's not a great fasting glucose, but it's not terrible. Look at their glycated hemoglobin. In other words, their hemoglobin A1C. It was 5.7 on average. So these people were already significantly down the road, had significant prediabetes. Now, <clears throat> C-reactive protein. Now, this is, uh, during, this is what happened during the study. 12 months, 24 months, each year during the study. Uh, in the resuvastatin group, CRP dropped from three and a half down to two or two or even le uh, less. LDL dropped, which you might expect, from an average of over 100 to in the 50s. HDL stayed about the same, 
uh, about 50, and triglycerides dropped from the 120s level to about 100. So <clears throat> what happened in terms of heart attack and stroke? We've already read that. I'm not going to go over that again. Um, what I will do, though, is show you the actual images. Hopefully you can see this. I will uh, increase the size a little bit. This is the primary uh, endpoint, having a heart attack or stroke. This is the resuvastatin group, and this is the placebo group. So again, what I'm trying to do is get a picture in your head that my doc says my cholesterol is okay. I'm age 60, but since my cholesterol is okay, I don't need a statin. Do you know whether you have cardiovascular inflammation? Again, it's uh, easy. I've got a course. It's free. Um, take a look. See if you have cardiovascular inflammation. Because if you do, your chance of having a heart attack, stroke, or death is way up here on this high line. And if you were taking a resuvastatin, it would be down there. So, again, uh, Heart attack, stroke, death, again, you see the same pattern. Unstable angina or revascularization, having to go into the hospital to get a stent. Again, there's danger here, and you just need to be aware of it. Unfortunately, very few patients, very few docs are. Was there anything else interesting in here? Well, this, this, um, this table here basically helps us realize that it doesn't matter what age, gender, or whether smoker or, ra or not, what racial group, what geographic region, you got a significant improvement in your risk from Crestor if you or Resuvastatin if you had inflammation. Significant, significant numbers. Uh, well, let's talk one of just a couple more minutes. Everybody says, well, I don't want to take statins. They're killers. They're bad. They're ugly. I get Oh gosh, do I get the comments and the hate, the haters on statins? And no, I've never been paid by pharmacy. I'm not paid by pharma, pharma now. Never will be. I'm paid by my patients to keep them help keep them from having a heart attack. So let's look at uh, side effects. Any serious adverse effect. Resuvastatin, 1352, placebo, 1377. Hmm, that went the opposite direction, right? Muscular weakness, stiffness, or pain, 1421 for resuvastatin versus 1375. Uh, as you see from the p-value, that very well could have been a random event. I don't think it was. I do think you didn't to get it, especially at the, the high levels that they were using, the 20 milligrams. Again, I start people at 5. Uh, and get them to two and a half twice a week. How about myopathy, the muscle tenderness? Uh, Ten in the resuvastatin group, nine in the placebo. Rhabdomyolysis. That's the, uh, rhabdo means muscle, uh, or it's a protein in the muscle. Myo means muscle, and lysis means to break up. It's the very serious, sometimes even fatal, breaking up of muscle tissue. You did have that kind of muscle tissue problem in one resuvastatin patient out of 8,901. Put the trade-off on that versus the um, hundreds of people that avoided a heart attack, stroke, or death. So <clears throat> uh, speaking of death, look at death from cancer. This was an interesting number. 35 among the resuvastatin group and 58 in the placebo group. The probability of that happening at random is... 2%. So a lot of people are not aware that uh, statins can help prevent uh, cancers as well. And uh, it's still not understood entirely why. Uh, there's some thought that it has to do with uh, the insulin levels um, and cardiovascular inflammation. But again, that's a different subject for a different video. Renal disorders, um, slight increase in renal disorders. Uh, among the resuvastatin group. Here's a critical piece. You say, well, it makes them, it moves them down that diabetes highway, and yes, there were some that were di diagnosed with uh, insulin resistance or diabetes by their doc. Well, on average, they had, they started with 5.8, and the um, hemoglobin A1C 
And as they progress further, the rosuvastatin, 20 of rosuvastatin every day, only got them up to 5.9. So again, uh, I'm not uh, buying and never have uh, bought the supposition that uh, these are incredibly dangerous in terms of uh, insulin resistance and diabetes. Uh, fasting glucose, 24 hours, 98 and 98. Um, <clears throat> so I think this is what I wanted to cover for this classic, uh, should have been blockbuster, standards changer, uh, changing study, Jupiter. Unfortunately, it didn't change the standards. We'll talk about why in, uh, in some other videos in this series. If you've made it this far, again, as usual, thank you very much for your interest.